can we get serious now? Going to be sharing with you some of the most truly transformational information that I've personally ever encountered in my entire life. A fine tooth comb. I'm going to be going through the top 10 ways that you can optimize your endocrine system so that you can maximize the primary male sex hormone testosterone to not just quantitatively exceed the upper echelon, the upper threshold of the male free testosterone range, but also, more importantly, qualitatively, experience life as a high team man. Be at ease with yourself. Be comfortable in your own skin and just own it. Testosterone and cortisol act in opposition. So if you want to be less stressed out, less disheveled, less discontented, these tips are really going to help facilitate a more optimized experience for you as you navigate life. It's the same information, by the way, that I just happened to stumble upon at a time when I just needed it the most. I wrote down the exact day here, January 9th, 2000. And 15, and this was the proverbial fork in the road for me where I could have either gotten bitter or gotten better. And what I'd like to inspire you to actualize is the latter. This is going to be your unfair advantage. And if you leverage this properly, this is going to be not dissimilar to if I would only grant you one wish. And you should wish for more wishes. That should come first. The first thing that you should do on your self-actualization journey is to fix your physiology, optimize your endocrinology, maximize your testosterone, because the leverage that that is going to lend you is unparalleled. By the way, on this day, January 9th, 2015, that was a day that a really prolific, prominent member of the bodybuilding.com forums finally got back to a PM, a private message that I had sent to him seeking mentorship. I needed help. I was brought to my knees by a disease that made my esophagus incredibly inflamed. Doctors didn't have the answer. They were prescribing proton pump inhibitors, inhaled corticosteroids, complete nonsense, garbage. I was let down By the rejection of a girl who I was just head over heels in love with, this girl Chelsea, who I admired immensely. (laughs) And these two things in concert created a gap, created an opening. And I hope there's an opening for you in your life right now. And you let me just come in. You invite me to offer you this information, this map that you can use to navigate to the promised land. The member of that forum, by the way, I traveled halfway around the world to come live with Luke all of these years later. And I've twisted his arm just several times over, got him to agree to formulate streamlined, sanitized content for you. No nonsense articles that are nothing short of a cheat code that you can just enter into life. We're going to be covering all of the bases. You want to understand sexuality, male-female dynamics, how to render yourself more attractive to the opposite sex. You want to maximize your testosterone. That's what we're talking about today. You want to build an impressive physique. All things male improvement are going to be on this website that we've started together. You can open up a browser and I'll show you what this entails. Alpha actualization. Dot com. That is nothing short of a cheat code. A L P H A A C T U A L I Z A T I O N dot com. That's a cheat code that you can enter and gain access to areas of life that you wouldn't previously have been able to. Because the truth is, is that I just didn't understand why did I have this disease? Why could I barely swallow food? Why was I anxious, uptight? Walking into a new room, why didn't I have the mental capital, the bandwidth, the liberty to read a room, to just understand and feel emotionally what was going on, to understand social cues, to read them, 
emotional intelligence. The list goes on and on. Why was I lightly autistic? Why did nobody tell me what was possible? It's all I ever wanted. I wanted someone to just give me a map so that I could navigate life more effectively. And that's exactly what alpha actualization is. I'm just going to read from the website briefly to give you a sense of what this entails. Masculine mastery. Welcome to Alpha Actualization, a community for men seeking the knowledge and means to master their physiology and psychology. Our mission is to provide a map for men to navigate the modern world and rediscover their masculine edge. I'll put a comment down below with a direct link to the article that I'm going to be riffing off right now, but I also recommend putting in your email at the bottom so that you're subscribed and will get alerted for future articles. Think of each article as an additional puzzle piece, an expansion of the map that's going to help you find your freedom, become more effective in this life. So without further ado, let's crack into these top 10 tips. It's going to be a complete game changer for you. Step number one, we have to focus on body composition. Unfortunately, in America at least, two out of every three people are overweight or obese. So assuming you're at a healthy weight, you look to your left and to your right, both of those individuals are ostensibly overweight or obese. And that's, by the way, based off of BMI, it's body mass index. This is the quotient of an individual's mass, their weight in kilograms divided by the square of their height in meters. And if that quotient renders a result of 25 or higher, they're classified in some sense arbitrarily as overweight and 30 or higher would be obese. Here's the truth as a male. Got an arms race between two different enzymes. One of them is called aromatase and the other is 5-alpha reductase. The problem with the former is that it's concentrated in adipose tissue, body fat. So the more body fat that you have, the more aromatase activity that ensues, and by extension, the greater the production endogenously of the most potent form of estrogen, estradiol. So when you have more aromatase activity than 5-alpha reductase, you've got more estradiol and less dihydrotestosterone which is the end result of 5-alpha reductase converting the free testosterone substrate, catalyzing the conversion to a more androgenic form of testosterone called DHT. Practical takeaway, get lean. Close to about 10% body fat is going to be optimal for most men. And of course, a picture is worth a thousand words. So I'll pull up a graphic here that's worth 8,000 words. Got eight smaller pictures here showing you a graphical depiction of what each body fat percentage entails. Don't put any stock into BIA, that's bioelectrical impedance analyzing devices. They're total trash and not dissimilar to a weatherman throwing a dart at the dartboard. Highly unreliable and inaccurate. DEXA scan, dual x ray energy absorptiometry is pretty good, as is hydrostatic weighing but you're probably not going to want to dish out the money to opt for either of those. So the mirror is your friend, and I recommend using that as the ultimate arbiter. If there's one metric that you could take from home that would be the most important to ascertain or serve as a proxy for your body fat percentage, I would just go with a waist circumference just above the navel. 10%. Right here is what you're looking at. 10 to 15% is a very good healthy range. Once you start dropping below 8%, it's really only sustainable unless you are doing what these two individuals are clearly doing, which is they are taking exogenous androgenic anabolic steroids. The problem with that is that it downregulates your own testicular testosterone production, which would be entirely counterproductive to the 10 tips that I'll be giving today, which is all about optimizing your natural testosterone production so that you can be high T and get high on your own supply anywhere you go without relying on 
exogenous substances, or as I like to refer to them as chemical crutches. One of the most important things for getting lean is understanding the importance of both food quality and food quantity. You've probably encountered individuals who espouse the fact that in their estimation, the laws of thermodynamics do not apply to human beings. These are typically individuals of the keto carnivore communities and their focus is merely on food quality. And I agree that we want to put food quality first, but for example, the individuals who do promote if it fits your macros and they say calories in, calories out are right in the sense that that is the ultimate arbiter of what dictates weight flux, whether you're hypercaloric, hypo, or isocaloric, that will dictate whether or not you gain, lose, or maintain your current body weight. But the truth is, is that unless you put food quality first, emphasizing a lot of red meat, beef, full fat dairy products, if you have the genetics to digest them properly, and eggs, if you don't emphasize these quality foods, then the problem is that your hormones are going to get completely trashed and tanked as you get to a lower and lower body fat percentage. And also you're going to be really hungry, ravenously so, because you're not going to be getting the proper satiety cues from the ostensibly hyper palatable processed packaged foods that you're consuming that come in bags, boxes, cans, and containers. Step number two, to be a very high tea man, is sleep optimization. I'll make a separate video showing you every single thing that I do. All of the T's that I cross and all of the I's that I dot to get really deep restorative sleep, to wake up at 4.30, 5 a.m. naturally without an alarm. The number one bit of advice that I could give you is to make your home, your bedroom, a sleep sanctuary. It has to be very intentional and most individuals will not do justice <laughs> The importance of light, temperature, and noise in their environment. You want to have blackout curtains. You want your room to be as dark as possible and as cool as possible and with as little noise as possible. As I said in a separate video, I'll show you all of the products and protocols that I employ to get the deepest possible sleep. But in short, what you want to do is get as much sleep as you need by setting an alarm to go to bed and not to wake up. The action step for step number two, getting enough sleep, would be pull up a tab on Google and type in Michael Brew chronotype. This is going to be a total game changer for you. I'm a lion, by the way. About 15% of the population are. The other... 55% are bears, 15% are wolves, and then I believe 10% are dolphins. Let's scroll down here. 15% lions. These are just like the morning folks. I wake up, as I said, 4.30, 5 a.m. naturally, cold without an alarm, without caffeine, feel amazing. Bears, this is the majority of the population waking up around 7 in the morning. That's pretty typical for most folks. We've got 15% of the population being wolves. These are your night owls, as it were. Luke, by the way, for what it's worth, would fit into this category. And it's no surprise then that Luke probably shouldn't be waking up at 4.30, 5 a.m. like I am. And that may be the case for you as well. I don't want you to think that 5 a.m. is optimal just because I'm doing it. You need to figure out what's optimal for you and realize that there are 24 hours in everybody's day. So the chunk of that 24 hours that you're asleep is largely irrelevant. And in fact, you're going to get the best sleep if you live in alignment with this circadian rhythm. So Michael Brew, if you go to the first link here, has, or I'm sorry, the second link from Google, he's put together a really good sleep quiz. And I highly recommend taking that and elucidating what that is, because just like a blood type, this isn't going to change. Whatever your blood type is, I'm O positive. It's going to be that way for the rest of your life. And your chronotype is largely the same. There's a link here to take the quiz. And I recommend going through that, putting in your email and figuring out what is optimal for you 
in terms of circadian rhythm. Step number three is eliminate or reduce stress, right? So exercising well, sleeping effectively, meditating, learn how to meditate. Nine years ago, I asked Luke, what is the single most important habit that I could implement today? Today, that would have the greatest impact on the trajectory and the quality of my life. He said, meditate. I went to YouTube, type in how to meditate. And I crossed paths with another individual, Leo Guru with actualize.org. It's a story for another time. <laughs> Meditation. It's going to help you silence the mind, combat cortisol, and frankly, increase your threshold for stress. But you also want to just clear the cobwebs, as it were, in your life. And so what I recommend doing is doing an audit, asking yourself, what's monopolizing mental capital right now? What are you thinking about? What are you ruminating about that you could potentially clear up? A good practical example are the petty squabbles. I've just observed a lot of former coworkers of mine having. And you could ask yourself, hmm, how is that manifesting in my life? What are some petty squabbles that I've had with my significant other, my lover? Maybe a friend, it could be a family member, it could be a coworker. I recommend clearing that cobweb, not through somebody else. Unfortunately, we live in a time now where people aren't able to advocate for themselves and be direct. People are very covert nowadays. And so they'll go through the HR department, right? Human resources, or if their neighbor's causing ruckus, right? They call the cops. I go to bed really early, eight, nine o'clock. My neighbor's throwing a party. I'm just going to calmly, politely walk over there and pose the possibility of them turning it down from a nine or 10 to a five. How do you do that? Communication is key, but sincerity is the solution. You walk over to your neighbor and you say, look, you guys clearly know how to party. I fucking love you guys. I would join you as well if I didn't have somewhere to be really early tomorrow morning. I'm trying to be my best self and experience life optimally. My sleep is just, it really is important to me. It's something that I value. I would love it if you guys could just dial it down a little bit. I'll do my part too, by the way. I've got some mocks, earplugs that I'm going to put in to help drown out the noise as well. But anything you can do to meet me halfway, I would really, really appreciate that. So you just saw that extemporaneous example of how you could pose the possibility of your neighbors dialing it back a little bit. So you have to ask yourself, how could that potentially manifest in the context of a working environment? This can be really toxic for people. You want to clear the air. If you feel tension between you and somebody else, just ask them if they have a few minutes. Like, hey, do, do you have a few minutes? There's just something that call me crazy, but... I've just been sensing, I've been feeling lately, and I just wanted to clear the air with you because I know we spend a lot of time together during the week working here, and I want this to be the best possible situation for both of us. I'm just feeling a little bit uneasy about something that happened the other week. Can we please just talk about that? Sincerity is the solution. This is a total game changer and will help you resolve a lot of conflicts in your life. It, I can't stop smiling right now just thinking about it because... This is really going to improve your life and is going to mitigate stress. And then meditation will increase your stress threshold. Step number four to optimizing your endocrine system is counterintuitive. If you're following a lot of the mainstream dietary dogma, and I can remember the cognitive dissonance that I experienced when Luke had expounded upon the importance of this point some nine years ago. There's something really important that I need to tell you about a coin. There's a coin that on one side is apparently, according to the mainstream dogma, the worst possible presentation of a carbohydrate. And then they'll say the flip side of that coin is the worst possible presentation of a type of fat. And that coin exists, but the problem is that the conventional coin is entirely wrong. 
The conventional coin would dictate that the worst form of a carbohydrate is starch, and that the flip side of that coin, the worst form of a dietary fat is saturated fat. And yet saturated fat and starch are two dietary staples for me, have served me really well, and in my estimation would make sense for being congruent with optimal human health, which is in stark contrast to the coin that I would posit is exceedingly deleterious for human health. The worst possible presentation of a carbohydrate is not starch, it's fructose. And the flip side of that coin is the worst possible presentation of fat, which is not saturated fat, but it's PUFAs, polyunsaturated fatty acids. I'm actually going to log into my chronometer account here. And if you don't already have a chronometer account, I recommend getting one. This is a really good action step for this step. You can put in your email address. And the action step here is to minimize your consumption of polyunsaturated fatty acids. I'm going to get logged in and I'm going to show you a really good litmus test that you can use to ensure that you're not consuming excess PUFA. If you go over here to your diary, I'm just gonna go to yesterday's March 27th. I'm gonna scroll down to the lipid section. What you want to do is take this number here, the total fat, in this case, 85.8 grams, and you just wanna move the decimal one point to the left. This is the fastest, easiest way to ensure you're not consuming excess PUFA. Whatever that number is, you just wanna make sure that's higher than your polyunsaturated fats. So the case in point here would be 85.8 becomes 8.58. So we ask ourselves, is 8.58 greater than 5.9? Yes, good. If the answer was no, that would be bad. And we would want to reduce our polyunsaturated fat intake. The greatest source of those, by the way, are industrial seed oils, which are made to lubricate machinery, literally, and not mankind. So we're talking about things like corn, canola, cotton seeds, soybeans, sunflower, safflower, rice bran, and grapeseed. These are industrial seed oils that you should subtract before they subtract you. They are highly oxidative and they are going to put a dampener on your testosterone levels. Good examples of saturated fats would be things like red meat, beef especially, full fat dairy, whole milk, cheese, yogurt, assuming again you have the genetics to digest dairy. Eggs are more a source of saturated and also mono, and you don't want to consume too many eggs because they are higher in PUFA because they are derivatives of a monogastric animal, a chicken, which bioaccumulates linoleic acid. Step number five, vitamin D3. An action step here is you could get a 25 hydroxy vitamin D test. You could go to walkinlabs.com. Let's do that right now. Walkinlabs.com. I'm just going to Google that and let's check this out. <laughs> Verifying if you are human. All right, let's type in vitamin D. So you wanna get the 25 hydroxy vitamin D test. So it looks like it's $58 if you go through LabCorp or $48, which is what I used to go through Quest Diagnostics. So for $48, you can get your blood vitamin D tested. And I recommend between a level of 50 and 100. I supplement with 5,000 IU, international units of vitamin D3 per day. And frankly, this is really integral to your overall health as well. There's a VDR vitamin D receptor in virtually every cell circulating in your body. Vitamin D, if you are subclinical, is going to tank your testosterone by several hundred points and getting this optimized in and of itself is going to pay dividends. And frankly, this is probably the easiest action item on this list for, I believe, $20 at most, you can get a one-year supply of vitamin D3. This is a box that you definitely want to be checking. Step number six, we're talking about really crucial minerals here. So zinc and magnesium. For zinc, you want to get between 25 and 40 milligrams per day total. 
combined from food and supplement sources. And for magnesium, you want to be getting at least 500 milligrams. So if we go back to chronometer here, what we can see looking at my diary from yesterday, we can scroll down to my zinc intake, which is 26.4 grams. And then we can look at my magnesium, which was 297.9 grams. But then I'm also supplementing with at least 300 additional milligrams of magnesium. And I would recommend 500 milligrams per day as a daily minimum. If you're more active, feel free to scale that upwards. Magnesium catalyzes countless reactions in the human body. And you've probably heard of ZMA supplements before, zinc and magnesium. This was popularized many, many years ago in the fitness community and something that people often take at bedtime. The best way to supplement with either zinc or magnesium, both if needed, is to get an amino acid chelated version. I will show you the formulation that I'm using personally, Doctor's Best Chelated Magnesium, Magnesium Bisglycinate Chelate. Each tablet is 100 milligrams. And frankly, I'll take between one and two tablets with each meal. So I'm getting an additional 300 to 400 milligrams on top of the 300 milligrams that I'm getting from my diet. Step number seven, avoid low carb dieting. The action of testosterone and cortisol oppose one another. If you go really low carb, it's going to increase your cortisol, could potentially downregulate your thyroid production as well. My recommendation practically, set 150 grams per day as your minimum and get at least the number of grams of carbohydrates per day as you do protein. So again, we can go back to chronometer and you can see my daily macros here, 166 grams of protein, 333 grams of carbs, and 85 grams of fat. And I do that because I train with a lot of volume in the gym, high volume training, and that necessitates a lot of muscle glycogen and is not something that I could ever contend with on a low carb diet. So we mentioned the aforementioned coin of fructose and PUFA in contrast to what gets erroneously espoused as deleterious, which is starch and saturated fat. What's interesting to note about this is that I actually had a DEXA scan performed this past December. I'll pull up the results for you on screen. And you can see that in spite of not being shredded by any stretch of the imagination, my body fat percentage here was 12.4%. My visceral fat was actually undetectable. And you might wonder why that is. And part and parcel because I have a very low fructose diet. Those 333 grams are largely comprised of basmati rice, which is the safest, as it were, carbohydrate source in my estimation. Painting with broad strokes dietarily, you want to derive your protein and fats from animal-based sources because you're going to have higher quality protein with more leucine, a more favorable amino acid profile, and the fats are going to be saturated and monounsaturated dominant relative to PUFAs. But for carbohydrates, of course, you have to lean on plant-based sources. And the best way to do that is to opt for a source that is low in defense chemicals, that is low in anti-nutrients like phytic acid. And white rice, quite frankly, is the creme de la creme for that. I'm only getting about 17 grams of fructose per day. And that is more than a fair trade-off because my source of that is pomegranate juice, which is something that greatly enhances antioxidant status, but slightly beyond the scope of this video. Step number eight, you've got to pick up heavy things and put them down. Train deliberately. Future articles will be talking about exactly how to train for aesthetics, for hypertrophy. But what you really want to do is train intensely. Write down how much weight are you lifting for how many reps. Then the next time you perform that exercise, try to beat it. Compare yourself to who you were yesterday and not to who somebody else is today. Always try to get better, progressively overload. And that's really a good analogy for your entire self actualization journey. It's a matter of doing more today than you could yesterday without worrying about tomorrow. 
and also without worrying about other people, without living on the momentum of how they're perceiving you. The greatest enemy in the weight room for you is going to be your own ego, your own concern of how it's being perceived, your persistence on pushing as much weight as possible on the bench press to the point where you are incorporating your legs. You've got some leg drive. Your nipples are to the ceiling because of the colossal arch in your back. When I bench press, I've got a flat back, got a wide grip. I'm lowering it really high up on the chest because I'm training the muscle and not the movement. And I personally don't care how much I'm lifting because I'm trying to maximally stimulate the pectoralis. I'm not trying to necessarily push as much weight as possible as quickly as possible from point A to point B. And that's one of the philosophical big picture differences between hypertrophy training and strength training, although there is a lot of carryover and crossover between those two. And you do want to incorporate a lot of compound lifts as those are really good for stimulating not only hypertrophy, but also optimizing your endocrine system. Step number nine. This is a big one. A lot of these steps are about things you can do. Step number nine is about avoiding something that you're likely already doing. And that's the consumption of phytoestrogens and phytosterols, which run rampant in such foods as soy, flaxseed, sesame, and oats. A lot of plant-based foods in general are going to be rich in phytosterols, which is a topic for another time, but actually are easily oxidizable. And for reasons beyond the scope of this video, not something you should be ingesting, certainly not in copious amounts. Phytoestrogens are estrogen mimicking compounds, and those will absolutely put a dampener on your endocrine system. And I highly recommend refraining from the consumption of these foods and opting for the aforementioned basmati rice to serve as your primary carbohydrate source. There is certainly no shortage of foods that contain these phytoestrogens and phytosterols. And so that's why optimizing your diet with an animal-based approach, leaning heavily on meat, milk, if you've got the genetics, and the eggs to satisfy your protein and fat macronutrients and the overwhelming majority of your micronutrients, spot supplementing, and then using basmati rice as your primary starch source is going to really serve you well and help check the box of this step number nine. And then lastly, step number 10, avoid microplastics. The world we live in, unbeknownst to you and me prior to encountering this information, could frankly be likened to that of landmines at every corner you turn. We're literally, no exaggeration, swimming in a swamp of endocrine disrupting chemicals, EDCs, be it the toxic tap water that literally has birth control in it and about 50 pharmaceuticals that get renally excreted and microplastics that people are just haphazardly consuming, not knowing that their Brita filter is total BS. And that's why what I do every single day, I've got it running right now in the other room. I distill my own water. Every single day, I render the most molecularly pure water that literally imitates the water cycle. That's what distillation does, is it renders zero parts per million water. And that's what you want to be putting into your body, not toxic tap water that is riddled with all of the aforementioned, which are going to do nothing but tank your testosterone and really just putting a dampener on the vitality that you would have otherwise had access to. There's a number of other sources of microplastics as well. We're talking about synthetic fibers in clothing, in bedding, things like polyester, nylon, spandex, just these man-made fibers that you might be even wearing right now. I opt for all cotton clothing. My shirt, my shorts, it's all cotton. I recommend doing the same. Food packaging, storage containers, cookware, utensils. Look, do the best that you can. Exposure to these harmful chemicals is inevitable. But what we want to do is minimize at all cost our exposure. We can do that with one-time purchases. I use an Instant Pot, the inner lid, it's all stainless steel. 
got a stainless steel spatula, a spork <laughs> that I eat with. I store my salt in a glass container. These one-time purchases that you can use for the rest of your life. Opt for stainless steel whenever possible. My water bottle is stainless steel. The pomegranate juice that I dilute and drink intra-workout is drank out of a stainless steel container. Do as much as you can to minimize your exposure to the greatest extent. Cosmetics and personal care products. So I don't use any products in my hair. Try to be as natural as you can. The soap that I'm using right now is purely coconut derived. Try to get as natural of sources as possible. Fluoride-free toothpaste. Try to get products with the least number of ingredients as possible. In this case, less actually is more because these unnecessary additives are truly a net negative and have no place in your life if you're serious about this journey, about optimizing your testosterone levels, being at ease with yourself, being healthy, feeling like a million bucks, being high vibe, and being able to offer other individuals the best possible experience of you. I love you very much. Drop a comment down below. Check out the comment down below. Check out Alpha Actualization. Pop in your email. Get subscribed to future updates. This is the map for you to become the man. I want you to become your most androgenic self. I want you to actually feel good in your own body and get the most juice out of the squeeze of this life. I love you very much, my friend. And until next time, find your freedom. Peace.